Hi, my scented friends. Welcome back to this corner of the internet. I hope that you're all doing fantastic. And it's finally time for me to do this Q&A video that I've been promising to do for a while. Ever since I started this channel, I've been getting so many questions, DMs on Instagram, like personal questions about me. And I thought that I would address these today so that you kind of get to know the person behind this channel. Like who is Sam? So grab yourself something to drink. I have my cup of tea with me here today. Sit down, relax, and enjoy the show. So the first question I've been getting a lot, like seriously since the beginning, has been what do I do for a living? And I understand why this question, you know, comes up because obviously I talk about some very expensive perfumes and how exactly do I afford all of these fragrances. I work in marketing and branding, so I do everything from digital marketing to storytelling to brand consulting, and this is why in a lot of my videos I will remark on the marketing behind a fragrance because it just naturally interests me a lot. What is it that makes a person go out and, you know, spend a ton of money on a specific brand compared to another brand? Um, what's the story behind each fragrance? Packaging is something that actually is important to me as well because that's one of the things that, you know, first draws a person to a product. So all of these things are kind of second nature to me and that's why I also bring these questions on the table when I review fragrances. A lot of psychology goes behind marketing campaigns, uh, behind products in general that people may not even be aware of. There's a ton of psychology involved. If you think about brands like Coca-Cola and how much that's impacted, even how we think about Christmas in general, you'll understand that branding is, you know, it's very important in today's world. I also got a ton of questions about whether or not I'd like YouTube to be my full-time job or work within fragrance in general, make that my full-time job. And at the moment, my YouTube channel is something that I enjoy because it is a choice. It is not something that I am forced to do. I do not rely on money from brands. I do not rely on brands sending me products. And I really think that the integrity behind this channel is what you know, makes it enjoyable for me, makes it enjoyable for you to watch, and I would much rather not go down that route. There are, you know, massive YouTubers out here who rely on this money from brands, and I think that that really comes across. Um, whether or not they get a ton of views, for me, views aren't super important. It's having a connection to a community, and I'm just grateful that I have people out there who enjoy my content, who can relate to my point of view when it comes to fragrance. And yeah, somebody said, I don't know what to ask, you are so intimidating. <laughs> that is just really strange to me because I, to myself, am like the least intimidating person ever. I'm like one of those people who walks down the street and just like randomly smiles at strangers where people are like, okay, why is she smiling at me? <laughs> you know, I'm just one of those in my head, like in my mind, I'm a very, very um, approachable, down-to-earth person. So this comment really made me laugh. And it makes me wonder how I come across in my videos because, yeah, that's just never my goal to be intimidating in any way. <laughs> I had a few people ask how I got into fragrance um, and, you know, how this hobby just became all-consuming in my life. <laughs> So about 10 years ago, I had a dear friend of mine introduce me to the world of fragrance. Before that, I had always enjoyed fragrance. I was a person who, because of my mother being very into, you know, classic uh, ladies' fragrances, I was always around that in some sense, and I was always drawn to it. Um, but it wasn't until my friend told me that he was looking for, you know, a special fragrance that would help express who he was as a person. And this friend of mine was such a interesting character. He was a person who, in many ways, was trying to find his place in the world. Um, he was quite artistic, quite creative, um, a little bit alternative, some would say and he was battling some mental health issues um, at the time and uh, throughout his life. So he sort of by chance came across perfume forums and Fragrantica was one of them. 
and he was just explaining to me how he had found this whole world online of people that cared about and loved fragrance and the way that they would describe these fragrances on a deeper level using poetry, using metaphors, really personifying these fragrances, something that is so difficult to explain, um, he just found was super interesting. So he told me about this, he told me this story and I was like, wow, this exists. There's a world out there of people who actually care about perfumes or fragrances on a deeper level and take the time to describe each and every one of them and link each one to a certain memory in their own lives. It was just such a profound thing for me to be hearing that this actually was something that a person could pursue as a hobby on a deeper level. So I went on Fragrantica myself and I've been a fan of that website. There's base notes, there are a lot of um, other online forums, but I would just go and read review after review. I got into the classics, I learned about the history of perfume, I learned about so many things, like I was just uncovering petal by petal um, what it is that is behind the world of perfume because I had no idea and this was all thanks to my friend who introduced me to this world. He since um, left us, he took his own life and he was, like I mentioned, um, he was a guy who, like I said, was looking for a place for himself in this world and one of the ways that he was searching for that was through fragrance. What's your ethnicity? My ethnicity is mixed. I am half black, half white. My dad is Danish um, and my mother is Tanzanian. So I am European and African. Will you do another video with your sister? Yes, I'd love to do another video with my sister, Sarah. Actually, I want to do videos with like <laughs> every member of my family and I would if it wasn't for this lockdown situation. So hopefully when I go visit my family, I will be able to film some more videos uh, with my sisters. I have another sister named Sabrina who I'd love to have on this channel as well at some point. So um, yeah, I think you guys would really enjoy meeting the rest of my family. Favorite romantic comedy? Favorite romantic comedy would have to be How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days with Kate Hudson. Is that her name? <laughs> I've probably seen that film like a quintillion, billion, zillion times. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, something about it just tickles me. I got a few questions asking about books and what kind of books that I like to read if I'm into literature. And from my nightstand, I have uh, The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. I've been trying to get through this one. I'm pretty bad with classic literature. I used to be um, a lot more into it, but now I more gravitate towards like self-help books, business books, um, things that help me with my, you know, business savviness. And one that I have been reading is The Speed of Trust by Stephen M. R. Covey. He also wrote The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. And I just, you know, I enjoy those types of books. I've also been reading a book on dreams and what they actually mean. For a long time, I was writing down my dreams as soon as I woke up because I do feel like dreams have an important part in explaining you what your subconscious is trying to tell you. Um, I don't know if you guys are into that kind of <laughs> jazz, but I absolutely am into self-discovery, um, trying to better myself as a person on a daily basis and looking inwards versus blaming everyone else for your problems. So yeah, just something that I've been into. The Alchemist, um, a classic. This is probably like the 20th time that I tried to read The Alchemist. I have this book in English. I have it in Italian. I I don't know, somehow I can't get through The Alchemist. It's like an easy read, but for me, I think because I'm more into like the factual books nowadays, um, I'm just having a hard time getting through novels and things like that. What is your most despised fragrance house? Yes, I want the tea. <laughs>
okay so i'm not going to say that i despise any fragrance houses i'm not here to look for a lawsuit um but there are certain houses where let's just say i haven't found my favorites joe malone haven't found my favorite from there i feel like a lot of those fragrances kind of give me that duty-free breeze that you get when you walk through duty-free in the airport it's kind of like what i would want an elevator to smell like or like you know a room around me but then again i haven't tried everything maybe i need to go back and revisit um the brand that you know there's some brands that i just don't agree with a bottle and i'm sorry to say that i am so shallow that if a bottle is disgusting to me i just cannot buy that fragrance sometimes i have bought the fragrance but then i've gone on and you know regretted it somehow i'd rather get a decant then but i don't know i just feel like the whole fragrance experience includes um, the bottle for me. I think some people would be surprised to know that I don't own a single Frédéric Mal fragrance. I haven't found anything from that house that just jumped out and screamed at me that this was the right one for me. I guess I liked um, like the more luxurious oud line but those are a lot of money so I have to think about that obviously. So yeah trying to think if there are any other <laughs> Again, I don't despise anyone. I would say like designer wise, probably my least favorite designer fragrance brand is like Armani. I'm sorry, just, just for my taste, Armani, don't hate me. Favorite travel destinations, Zanzibar. The beaches of Zanzibar are just incredible. It's not a place that is, you know, super traveled to like other places. It is pricier than going to let's say Thailand but I think that it's worth it. It's just an amazing place. I love traveling to Morocco. Morocco is just absolutely incredible for freak heads. It's just a world of senses. You go walking through the souks. I've been to Bagan in Myanmar that has all of those temples. You watch them at sunrise and it is just incredible. That just transports you to another like time dimension. I would say just anywhere in the Middle East in general. I would love to go to Jordan. I in my mind think that that's a place that you know I would definitely resonate with. Um, I love Australia. I went to see Uluru and that was such a amazing deep um, experience. I just love culture. I love experiencing different places. If I didn't have to work, <laughs> I would just be traveling all the time, learning about different cultures, learning different languages. I just love it. I love the world. Somebody asked, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you asking. Favorite vetiver and or bergamot leaning fragrance? So my favorite vetiver um, slash bergamot, so like fresh vetiver, um, I've talked about before is Mon Vétivé from Essential Parfum. They have a bergamot fragrance as well, which I have somewhere. I just couldn't find it at the moment. Um, and their bergamot is also great. So this line in general, I don't think I've done a line overview yet, but I should because they're just great for the price. Fresh, easy to wear. This is, yeah, I'm really enjoying this vetiver. How many languages do you speak? I speak four languages, um, give or take. <laughs> I speak English, Danish, French, Italian. My Spanish is rusty because I learned Italian and that kind of shoved all of my Spanish aside, although I do understand quite a bit and quite well. What else? I understand German on a basic level. I can understand Quite a bit of German written because I speak Danish so I'm looking into improve my German skills but I just love languages like I said if I had all the time in the world and no job I would just be learning languages non-stop I would love to learn Arabic I would love to learn Russian I find those to be really beautiful languages um, technically my first language was Swahili I was born in Tanzania and I spoke that until the age of five then my mother stopped speaking Swahili to me because she wanted um, my sisters and I to speak English and we went to American international schools so yeah I'm not American I just went to American international schools what country do you live in and what is your all-time favorite perfume just one Woo, okay, so I live in London. I've been living here for over four years. I love London so much. This is just, to me, the perfect city for this stage of my life. And um, 
one perfume if I could just choose one. My favorite perfume of all time, it might be Les du Désert Marocain by uh, Andy Tower. I've done a review of that fragrance. I just absolutely love it. I have not worn that fragrance in maybe a year's time because I've been seeing it pop up a lot of places and I don't know, somehow I like my favorite perfume to be one that is just for me and that's impossible with me having a YouTube channel of course and you know being a part of this community but uh yeah favorite fragrance at the moment at the moment I am loving Sheep Shot by Olfactive Studio this is just so yummy this is so delicious I'm in love with this fragrance it has the Olfactive Studio DNA this is a house that I feel like you can't own all of them because it has such a common DNA in the undertones of each fragrance. But I will do a full review of this one. And yeah, this is absolutely delicious. When will you start making your own perfume? <laughs> um, honestly, at this moment in time, I don't ever see myself making my own perfume. Um, never say never. I know that a lot of YouTubers kind of strive to release their own product line or whatever. I do have, you know, an entrepreneurial side to myself. I would like to do something business-wise long-term, but it probably will not be just a product. I think that it would be on a much larger scale. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I kind of feel like if I wanted to create a perfume, I would have become a perfumer a long time ago, but I made that difference or distinction between myself as a creator uh, versus a person who enjoys the art. So yeah, I think I'm more of a consumer or like curator of the art. I like curating it. I like um, creating my opinion and highlighting the artists that I want to support but I don't think that I'm an artist. I think that my art is probably uh, more in the marketing, branding, business world. So yeah, just do what you're good at is what I <laughs> would advise to everyone. Which one of these words describes you the best? Gypsy, Wiccan, or vampire in the best way possible? <laughs> Okay, so questions like this makes me wonder what you guys think about me. I think that actually I'm somehow all three. I identify with vampires, like I've always loved vampires um, when I was little in movies. I know it might sound creepy or whatever, but I just love that pristine, you know, uh, outer appeal of the vampires and then they lure you in and then they get what they want. I'm a very spiritual person as well and I'm becoming more and more spiritual as I get older so not maybe like I believe in magic but I definitely believe in a higher power within all of us uniquely so I kind of relate to the Wiccan side of things and um, Gypsy I definitely can identify with as well because I am a traveler, I am a nomad, I have not stayed in one spot um, for very long ever. So yeah, I don't know, that's an interesting one, but <laughs> I like that question. Would you consider yourself an eccentric person? Um, I don't necessarily consider myself an eccentric person. Like compared to people that I have met out there, there are definitely way more eccentric people than myself. I am just, you know, an open person. I'm open to everything. I say I'll try anything once, pretty much, which is why I even question like what I've gotten myself into yet again by opening myself up to people on the internet. <laughs> like I'm a person who says yes first and then I figure it out. So what do you think about men wearing feminine marketed fragrances and vice versa? Well, of course, um, I'm all for all fragrances being unisex. People wear whatever the heck they want to wear. I am a person who actually, one of the reasons why I started this channel was because I wanted that line to be completely blurred or removed between masculine and feminine fragrances. I think that it's totally unnecessary and there are a lot of like a lot of the style of certain masculine fragrances and certain feminine fragrances follow this typical um, added muskiness that people would think would be associated to a man and a certain 
sweetness that would be associated to a woman and I completely disagree with these things. One of my issues since the beginning has been that a lot of fragrances were too sweet for me. They said pour femme or you know for women and it was like either you wear something sweet or there's nothing for you on this market. So this is why I love a lot of the classic chiffres. And I'm going to do more videos on, you know, actual fragrances that are marketed towards one or the other, but that everyone can wear. Because that's... it's just silly. What is your absolute favorite note or accord in perfumery? Okay, so I have several notes or accords that just jump out at me. I'm a lover of leather. If there is a fragrance line that has a leather fragrance in it, I would usually go to that fragrance first and try that out. And a lot of the time that will end up being my favorite amongst the line. I don't know why. I gravitate a lot towards, um, I will say incense I gravitate towards, but not always. It really depends on uh, the execution of this particular incense fragrance. I will say that if I ever see milk listed as a part of the notes list or, you know, the description of a fragrance, I will immediately have to try that fragrance. There's something about the description of milk, the milk accord, uh, the milkiness to a perfume that just has me salivating and I don't know what it is. It's probably something psychological again. Um, I just gravitate towards milk. I love milk chocolate. Okay, so that's all I have time for today, unfortunately, but thank you so much for sending all of your questions across. Once again, I just want to give you a heartfelt thank you for all of your support of me and of this channel, and I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like I have a deeper connection with each and every one of you, even though I can't see you, you're just watching me. It's kind of like a one-way street. So I really would like you, whoever is watching, to leave me a comment with one thing about yourself, just one thing. Um, you can also write multiple things about yourself, just so I get a little bit of a sense of who it is that connects with me as a person and as a reviewer on this platform. So thank you for all of the love. Thank you for all of your time watching my videos and I will see you in my next review. I need you more.